back in Hereford, ready for the second leg, Hereford to Worcester. 16.9 miles today, 15 miles tomorrow. This entire thing is going to be shot on the Insta360 1R, as I was talking about last episode. And if you haven't seen that, make sure to press the link up above, watch the first stage from Gloucester to Hereford. And one of the niggles I had last time was I kept getting like stones and sticks and stuff like that in my trainers. I went out and got myself some Montane Gators, fit perfectly on my Ultras. With the Velcro in the back and the hook in the front. I'll let you know how I'll get on with that as well. Right, so about three miles into this route, it actually take you through a brand new housing estate and what they've done, the builders, they've completely closed it off and there's no way round it. Well, you can go right round it, but there's no way through it whatsoever. They've completely closed it off. In a bit of a panic, I just sort of leapt over a, a barbed wire fence. No bumps or bruises, I'm okay, but I don't recommend it. So plan ahead if you are going this way, definitely recommend going round. Alright, so we're about eight miles in now. Nine miles left, so not far off the uh, halfway point, but I thought this would be a nice field to, um, to film on. The amount of like overgrown gates with like brambles and nettles is a, it's a bit of a shame really, but um, I am wearing gaiters, so it is making it a lot easier. But if you come in here in the cooler months, maybe just put on a light pair of trousers just to save yourself a few nettle stings. Lack of signposts makes it hard to understand which side of the fence you need to be on and trust me you don't getting that wrong isn't isn't nice because you're having to um oh you're having to get back over then at some point and you can tell where people have made that mistake the fences have been damaged in some way see i'm having to check now because it's so overgrown it's hard to tell what side you need to be on um i already damaged my new backpack last trip which i've had to sew up so I'm having to be extra careful this time and take my pack off, clear the way, go back for my backpack and then go back again, you know. So I have had a look and even though I am kind of messing about doing that, I haven't actually put on that much time or mileage yet. Time in motion is two and a half hours right now for eight miles, which is not bad at all. So far, eight miles in, not once have I had to stop for my feet. So 100% recommend gaiters. On the last video, I did get a uh, comment from an, a guy called Alan saying, I went past a church and I was complaining I couldn't find water. He said, check churches. I checked this one, unfortunately there isn't a tap. Uh, what they do have is uh, a drain pipe going down to a barrel. This church, no water. I will keep looking though, Alan. I will check the next church. Oh, 
about 11 miles in. So the last church I was at, apparently I spoke to some people later on, there was a tap. No idea where it was, I don't know if it was maybe hidden by that toilet. Those of you who do this trail look harder than I did. What I was gonna say as well, these things, fuel squeeze things, they're amazing. This is all I've been eating today, to be honest. It's over 1,200 calories, and it's only 225 gram of peanut butter and chocolate. So if you're struggling to find some sort of snack on trail, this will last you a couple of days at least. It's got a resealable cap on there. Fold it back up and stick it stick it in your side pocket. I have no idea how excited I am to see. Well, that signpost there says footpath that way. This way also gets to where I want to go. This is very obvious. Wow, I was panicking then. Thought it was gonna be another one of those fields. This would have been a lot worse to get through than a cornfield. Imagine trying to squeeze through something like that. I feel so brave. <laughs> Don't show weakness. Oh look, a pheasant. Hello, I'm going. Are they behind me? I feel like they're right behind me. Oh my god. Oh. Okay. Hey. Ooh. Bye. finished day three. It's now 10 to four. I believe it was 17.4 miles in the end. I think it was about six hours. I was gonna stop at the end point there and maybe just have a little rest and have something to eat. But I did pass someone and they said there was a pub down here. I'm not sure if it's open, but I'm just gonna see if it is. Oh my God, I might just have to end it there. Camp out in the beer garden, just get absolutely leathered. But anything now up until sunset is a bonus. I've literally seen one person on this trail and that was the only person that was walking the actual three choirs away since all the way back in Gloucester that was the first person I've met. It's quite sad but also quite humble. An older lady, her husband recently passed 12 months ago. They were both really keen uh, hikers, walkers together. So in, in honour of him, she's walking three choirs away. So that's that's amazing. And I was just exchanging stories of the, uh, the trail so far and uh, how hard it's been. She was just saying, oh, when I was your age, I was doing this all the time. I'm just hoping that when I get to that age, I'm gonna be the same as well. I'm gonna be an old man walking around. <laughs> all right, a bit more emotional there for a sec. somewhere to stop now. I just stopped at a pub about a mile back. Unfortunately, they only did cash. I asked if I could fill my water up. I said, oh, are you, sure, are you sure you don't want any juice or anything? I was like, no, no, water's fine. Thank you. And I just went to the toilet, washed my hands, washed my face, which was amazing. On my way out, she's like, here's your water. I was like, thanks. And she's like, here's a, here's a can of beer. She gave me a cold can of beer. It's in my bag right now. That's why I don't want to keep going too long because I don't want it to get warm. I'm an idiot for not bringing cash.
about half five. I've got about 8.6 miles left to go. It's so quiet and so cold. I don't know if you can see it, it's Canadian geese down there. And whatever that is. Oh, what's that? Anyone know? I believe it could be a crane. Also, I got up just in the right time because I think a farmer might have opened the gate because some cows started coming into the field. <laughs> I can chill out a little bit more today. I worked hard yesterday. So I'm going to take it nice and easy. Have you ever seen that before? Champagne Christmas trees, huh? Old church turned into a house. I'd love that, but I'd also be like a bit cautious about ghosts and stuff. Just wild west. You're escorting me out. sit down over here and give you a view of it. Day four actually finishes about half a mile short of the cathedral. So you have to go into day five to get a little bit further on the track. And then you've got a brake track, press pause, and then you go round to the front of the cathedral. <sighs> Two thirds of the way done. I only push myself hard on the first day um, simply to make the second day a little bit easier but I wouldn't be pushing it if I was doing the whole lot in a wanna. It's definitely doable. In fact you could probably take your time, stop for break, stop for lunch. Right well that's it. Finished. We're not quite finished because I've got a walk. Feels like a really long way to the train station. Again thanks for watching. Make sure to Subscribe, press the bell icon as well for day five and six coming up soon. From Worcester Cathedral back to Gloucester Cathedral and that'll be three choirs way done. Thank you for watching, hope you liked it and I'll see you soon. <laughs>